Welcome to video games with Mo Pooples. Everyone was like, oh shit, why aren't you modding Banished? So here I am, modding Banished. Here is Colonial Charter Journey and why you want it and a little bit of how it works. Mostly you just get a ton of new production lines and buildings and you can also flatten your terrain with the button and oh yeah, you get a bunch of decorations. I'll just give you the quick rundown from what I learned while playing. Okay, start by installing this mod. And don't ask me too many questions about this part because I did cry uncontrollably the entire time. But it's in the Steam Workshop, and yeah, it's a mega mod. And if you ask me, it's more like a whole ass expansion to the game. So I started a new game, and then I immediately realized I forgot to enable the mod in the first place, so don't do that because you'll have to start over. Okay, so here I am starting over. I started a simple stockpile and I got my shit going and I promise I'll get to the game, but yeah. This is where I encountered a bug. I marked land to be cleared very, very far away and all of my villagers wandered off and died. So I started over and check out all this cool stuff in your toolbar all of a sudden. So now your toolbar has all sorts of different things. Starting with the housing, you have a couple different sets that you can pick from. You can also get a brand new upgraded boarding house that looks pretty cool. Uh, you can also have storage that is a little bit different. You can choose specifically what items can be stored in what barn as well as larger barns or bank barns. You can now have tinneries that maximize your food, like you get more out of it than you put into it. Uh, you can have stables for different creatures and you can now have mines that you can fill in when you're done or you can upgrade your mine and make them even deeper. You can now have all sorts of weavers and seamstress people and you can now have a metalsmith and a city blacksmith. Um, you get a bunch more brewing options, you can now make like coffee and such too. Maybe some of this is part of the original game and I don't remember, I haven't played in a long time. You'll get so many new buildings, and then my favorite, the new housing styles. Now you can build oddly specific trading posts. I don't really even mine now, I just trade every winter for rocks and tin. You have tin now. But wait till you see these production lines. New buildings require new materials to build, but yeah, some of them are really hard to get and it won't really happen until mid-game, so look at that pretty carefully. Foresters are different too. I built a bamboo wood lodge thing because I read on Reddit somewhere that those things give you big wood. Big wood. Got an oil press for early production lines, but I still really don't know what it does or if I need it. You can also get a tidal pool now, which helps collect like crayfish and oysters and seaweed and mussels and then there's a lot more cool buildings that you can get that will help with production lines or you get through a production line an example of production lines and this one may be the most important at least I like it the best it is the building materials so I got a shore house because I read somewhere that it can lead to clay and then that clay can lead to brick, but to make bricks I have to get a fuel refinery, but the fuel refinery also fuels my iron smelty thing, which turns my iron ore into iron, so my tools suck a little less. If you think we're done now, we're not. Let us refer back to this chart. Or maybe this chart. Who knows? And then you need glass, which you need that thing that the people can go and dig up sand, so then you can turn the sand into glass, and then the glass into- you send it to the building material guy. Not only does the shore house dig up the sand for the glass, but it also will dig up your clay for the bricks. And then you- yeah, other than that, just the blacksmith. There's a lot of different ways that you can reach the same outcome, like this was just the easiest way for me. So now that you have your building supplier, you can make those fancy buildings, and you can also start upgrading other buildings around you. Like you can upgrade your barns to make them super big, you can upgrade your hospitals and your schoolhouse, and then your schoolhouse capacity reaches like some stupid amount. 
Look at all this new shit you can make. Go to town hall, obviously. Okay, so this is where I bought cotton. I had no idea what it did. Turns out it can go to a weaver or it can be traded for quite a bit. Or send it to an oil press. You can have silkworms for crafting too, and they're fueled by mulberry leaves. You can now just have a ton of coat options and coat making people options too. Not sure if this is how everyone plays, but early game I tend to make a third of the population farmers, and then I remove all of them from being farmers in the winter and switch them over to being laborers. It gives me a bit of a head start. Here's a cool production line. I have a lot of deer, and they make a bunch of venison, so I made a barrel making place but had to make a venison butcher and then a salt mine and then a meat preserver guy to get the most out of my meat. Banished! Banished! You can have new markets, some specific just for food. You will need a fuel refinery, so just get one of those early on if you want to build most cool things, and it works pretty fast. Your refinery can take firewood, fire bundles, charcoal, coke, or coal, and then turn it into furnace fuel. And your furnace fuel will power most buildings that are super cool. These super cool buildings include, but are not limited to, your brickworks, your glassworks, some of your mining elements, like your forge. And now I'm approaching 500 citizens. You may be wondering, how am I feeding them with this colonial expansion? And the answer is, not very efficiently. I have so many damn crops, it is honestly miserable. So I'm going to try to look at other methods. I'm gonna resort to tinneries. I'm gonna have more gathering and, eh, maybe not gathering, or fishing docks, a lot more fishing docks, and those uh, tidal pools. Hunters. Yeah, it's time. I tend to resort to 8x8 farms, and no, they're not the most efficient, but I swapped them out for 11x11 11 11 farms and longer farms, and uh, yeah, my my people crashed. It did not, uh, it did not take well. I'm sticking with the 8x8s. I'm not emotionally equipped to make this video about the most efficient crop size. But their website will just tell you, so you can go to the link in the description. They have a tool for this. Surviving disease outbreaks is now a billion times easier because you can make your hospitals all wumbo jumbo. Please observe my declining health. People are kind of picky and don't want to eat only broccoli. They are suffering because they don't have a balanced diet, so this calls for yet another production line. I'm gonna make wheat and use a windmill to make it into usable wheat for my bakery, and then I built a bakery where I take my sugarcane crops and my sugarcane processing area and send the refined sugar here, and then I use the wheat and I can make uh, I can make cookies or I can make bread, I can make all sorts of things. Next step, walnuts. You can also use the sugar at the preservist. Preservist. I got a water wheel sawmill as well because I noticed that my firewood production takes absolutely forever and this just gets it going really quickly. You can have an apothecary and by having one of these you should probably get a beehive person. You will also get honey from this which is good. And then from the beeswax you can make um, people who make candles as well. And the candles are used to make your mines even deeper. Now I'm making different mines for different ores to make different kinds of silverware sets so that I can do the fancy silverware and upgrade other homes to look really pretty too. I made a pub kitchen and it also maximizes food. I ended up making a couple more of these actually. And then I built a governor's office where they just collect some silver coins. They tax you. And we love that. And this is where I'm going to leave off. I have covered honestly not a lot of this. There is so much to this mod. 
Also, don't be concerned about everyone who says they're cold. They are lying. There's still so many more features of this, so try it out for yourself because I don't really want to talk about Banished anymore. Uh, thank you for watching. Please keep in mind that every time you subscribe, my microphone gets just a little bit better. It's science. <laughs>